Hey all, welcome to ShareTrek. This is Raj here. And this video is for people who follow my HIV videos. And uh, today's video is uh, going to be more of a philosophical discussion because um, recently uh, I have been studying uh, the sickle cell disease uh, therapies, uh, two gene therapies that got approved. Uh, and both of them involve uh, bone marrow uh, replacement. Uh, in other words, taking out the bone marrow, uh, scooping it clean using a conditioning agent and then reinstalling uh, new bone, uh, bone marrow cells uh, after doing necessary modifications and uh, that cures a patient for a lifetime. So this has already been approved by FDA and it's in, uh, it's, it's in place uh, now for uh, actual treatment of patients in real life situation, uh, not as a second line of treatment but as a first line of treatment uh, which people can use if they choose to. So I'm going to describe that today and I'm also going to explain why this is very important for HIV and how I visualize this changes the landscape for HIV treatment uh, given the change uh, in the standard of care uh, for uh, therapies and uh, given the fact that uh, bone marrow transplant is becoming more socialized and uh, it's not seen as daunting as it used to be before. Uh, so that's the subject matter of this video. With that said, let's get started. Welcome back, friends. I want to keep this as short as possible because philosophical things are um, uh, users' uh, own preference and many people just want to know what is the medicine, when is it going to come, what is it going to cost, when will I get it in my arm. So this is not that type of a video. So those of you who choose to watch uh, till the end, I'll be thankful for you um, for, for doing that. Uh, that said, uh, here is what is happening with CASJV, which is uh, from CRISPR Therapeutics and Vertex. It's a CRISPR-Cas9 based uh, treatment for sickle cell disease. So in sickle cell disease, it's a genetic disorder where the blood cells are malformed and they come uh, in the shape of a sickle, as a result of which they get clogged up in different parts of the body. And uh, patients suffer what's, what is called as VOEs, uh, vascular uh, occlusive uh, events, which are very painful and they have to be given blood trans uh, transfusion uh, in order to come back to normal. And these events may happen three or four times a year depending on the severity of the case for the patient. This is expensive and it also opens up the patient to the risk of HIV as well as hepatitis B or any blood-borne disease because blood transfusions are happening much frequently than uh, ever. So the risk factor is very high for these patients. Uh, that said, the new treatment that has been approved uh, have been from two different uh, uh, companies. One is CRISPR-Cas9 uh, Cas9 using um, uh, CRISPR therapeutics and Vertex combo. Uh, they have come up with CASJV. The other one is called Lovocell. Uh, there's a brand name for it, uh, but uh, I don't remember it. It's from Bluebird Bio. They do not use CRISPR-Cas9. They use a different method for uh, gene editing. But both of these require uh, the bone marrow to, uh, to be uh, replaced. So what they do is first they extract uh, the CD34 cells, um, uh, which are a progenitor cells. It's a, a progenitor blood stem cell. They remove it from the uh, bone marrow and they keep, uh, they keep a portion of it uh, separate just in case uh, the treatment did not work. The original can be put back if the bone marrow does not uh, uh, accept engraftment of the modified cells. This process of uh, taking out the blood stem cells will take around two weeks. Uh, it is called as aphoresis. And, um, uh, and then once there is sufficient amount of the blood stem cells, uh, then the patient is uh, allowed to go. And then it takes around six months for CASJV to be created. The creation of CASJV is editing specific genes uh, in the stem cells so that they start producing a different kind of uh, red blood cells. And once CASJV is ready, the patient is brought back into the hospital and they are given a conditioning regimen, which is bisulfan, which is a chemotherapy, which will uh, clear out the entire bone marrow and make it vacant and ready to receive new stem cells uh, to engraft. And once this is done, then CASJV will be infused into the patient and the CASJV uh, modified blood stem cells will gravitate towards the bone marrow and implant themselves and then they will start creating uh, new blood cells. And uh, the, the process is going to take around a couple of weeks when the uh, hospital will observe the patient and make sure they are fine. 
and uh, then they will be let them uh, they will let the patient go and the patient is supposed to be cured for life uh, with this so this is how it's working and two therapies are already approved with this kind of a methodology roughly this kind of methodology when i say roughly what i mean is both of them involve uh, removing uh, stem cells from the bone marrow clearing out the bone marrow with a conditioning agent and then reinstalling uh, modified uh, stem cells. So there is one more therapy called as Eritas 301. It has given spectacular results uh, from their uh, phase one clinical trials. That is also for sickle cell disease and beta thalassemia, just like the other two treatments that I described. It also involves uh, basulfan conditioning, cleaning out the uh, bone marrow and uh, re-implementing new modified uh, stem cells uh, into the bone marrow for engraftment. Now, if this is going to be the standard, what would prevent surgeons from uh, taking a HIV patient, uh, taking out their um, blood cells, stem, uh, stem blood cells, identifying the appropriate progenitor uh, stem cells, and then making modifications in them so that CCR5 suppression can take place, and then clearing out the bone marrow and giving the patient back their own stem cells, which can re-engraft in the bone marrow, and uh, start producing CD4 T cells which do not have CCR5. And if the CD4 T cells do not have CCR5, uh, then it's, um, it's going to be uh, protected from HIV-1 because HIV-1 takes the help of uh, CD4 uh, receptor and then uses the CCR5 co-receptor in order to progress further uh, to deposit the HIV RNA into the CD4 uh, T cells. So if that can be done, then uh, just like the Berlin patient and the others who got uh, CCR5 uh, mutated um, stem cells from donors, uh, we can create CCR5 mutated stem cells from the patient themselves. It will be autologous treatment, and I would visualize that it will have the same kind of duration or slightly more duration for preparation like they do for CASJV. It will need more duration for preparation uh, because... Uh, when a HIV patient gives uh, uh, stem cells, uh, then they will have to make sure that none of the uh, re reinstalled stem cells uh, contain CCR5 and they do not have the HIV genome in it. So I, I suppose that will take a little extra work. But it's in the realms of possibility. Of course, friends, you know that I'm not a doctor or a scientist. Whatever I'm saying uh, out here in this video is based on what I have seen being done for sickle cell disease. And um, also, if you look at AGT 103-T, they are suppressing CCR5 uh, co-receptor, and uh, that's how they are giving their uh, treatment. So if uh, this kind of uh, approach is possible, then it could be a functional cure for life, uh, because uh, if there are hidden reservoirs somewhere in macrophages and other things, that will continue to exist and that will continue to uh, produce uh, new virions but the CD4 T cells will be absolutely protected and uh, they will be sensitized to HIV uh, virus and they will be killing the new virions um, rapidly and keeping the uh, HIV load in the blood much lower. Of course, this is all speculations and I think at this point of time, uh, looking at so many of these uh, sickle cell disease uh, therapies getting approved, which require bone marrow transplant, uh, I guess that um, the, there will be a lot of companies and uh, scientists in the industry who will decide to come up with a, a therapy for HIV, which has got CCR5 suppression and uh, which, which involves um, clearing out the bone marrow and um, regrafting modified uh, stem cells from the same patient which have got CCR5 suppression. So friends, that's an optimistic note. Uh, I don't want to unduly make you optimistic, but I honestly think that this is within the realms of possibility. Earlier we were saying that blood marrow, a bone marrow transplant is very um, invasive and it should be done only in the extreme circumstances. So I'm thinking that if we have uh, justified that sickle cell disease uh, is going to be um, meeting the threshold of extreme circumstances, then I think HIV also should qualify very soon. And we'll start seeing that um, coming into the clinical trials very soon. With that, my friends, I'd like to end this video. Hope you have a great day. And thanks to all the Patreons and members who are supporting the channel for HIV content. And um, I would request that those of you who are watching this video, please become a member of our Patreon and support this channel for more HIV content going forward. We are a unique uh, channel uh, for HIV content because we dive deep into various mm -hmm. therapies and bring you very informative uh, content, and it takes time and efforts. Your support helps. 
Thanks and have a great day. Bye for now.